Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing another battery performance test and today we're gonna to be looking at the Yumi Power Battery. This is a 4S 5200 milliamp hour pack. It is rated at 50C. So this is what we're gonna be taking a look at here in this video. Now, of course, just like all the other battery packs, sometimes I order them with XT90 connectors because those packs are available. Sometimes they come with EC5s sometimes they come with Deans. I cut all those off to make sure that the tests are consistent. I don't think there would be too much of a difference on connectors, but just to make certain I use these. In addition to that, it just makes it very easy for me to connect to all the equipment that I run all these tests on. So that's the reason for the battery connector swaps. You don't need to do it on the batteries. This is not why I change them because you need to do it. I change it because it makes everything simple and consistent. What we're going to do for a battery performance test in this video is we're going to be looking at three separate components. We're going to be looking at the 100 and 5 amp load test. We're going to be taking a look at a capacity of the battery pack under a 30 amp load. Then we're going to take a look at internal resistance and ultimately calculating the C rating, the actual C rating based off of IR. We're going to take a look at those three elements. Let's now jump right into our 105 amp load test. Here's our performance test. We loaded this at about 105 amps. Of course, these two battery packs actually couldn't sustain that 105 amp load because of the voltage drop. We got something closer to around the 90 amp mark. And you can see how the orange line here dips down closer to the 90 amp mark near the end of its cycle. Another thing to point out here is that both of these battery packs when we did the test didn't have a lot of milliamp hour that came out of the pack when we loaded it this far. It hit that 3.3 volt cutoff for these batteries. Now the Yumi battery pack, and we're gonna get into some of the specifications, we're gonna remind ourselves here that this is a 50C rated battery and it has a total capacity of 5200 as it's rated on the label. And the Z battery pack is very similar in its specifications, except it, it is rated for a 120C rating there, which is quite higher than the Yumi. It's more than double, of course, and we're gonna see exactly what kind of performance we get out of both of these batteries. So when we look and compare our graph, one of the things that you can see is that we only get time for up to just 17, 18 seconds or so when the battery hits that low voltage cutoff of 3.3 volts, which is close to an industry standard for a lithium battery pack being used in a type of application. You might use 3.2 or 3.3. Those are the only recommended values that I would I would push, if you wanna go higher than that, that's fine, but definitely not lower than that. That's what I would recommend. So when we look at the specifications that we got out of this 18 seconds, here's what it tells us. The total milliamp hour that we were able to get out of this battery pack was 428 versus the Z at 774. So when you look at the actual difference there, it's negligible in terms of the 5200 milliamp hour that this battery actually contains. Whether you get 770 versus the 428, um, there's a difference, but it's not that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. We would expect a battery of this nature to be able to provide well over 4,000 milliamp hour just to put things into perspective. Then the milliamp hour to 3.5, again, very minor differences here, even more so that you're getting 41 versus 46 out of the Z. And then the time is 1.7 versus 1.85. Again, very, very minute in terms of the differences. When you look at the 3.6, um, it even gets worse for that specification. Here you got the milliamp hour to 3.6 of eight for the Yumi and 7.3 on the Z. This is gonna give us a time of about half a second. Voltage at that 10 second mark was 3.32 on the Yumi and 3.40 on the Z. This is where things tell us a story here that we are essentially just barely above that 3.3 volt cutoff here and what's happening is, is not too much longer, we're gonna be right under that mark, and of course the battery's not gonna be able to sustain that, and that's where we get the cutoff for this cycle. The energy per cell here, the watt minutes, is 87 versus 156, and that's specifically because of the milliamp hour that we're able to actually dissipate out of the Z being more. The average cell wattage, is 314.6. Now keep in mind, this is only for the first 20 seconds of the pack. It doesn't really tell us a good story here. So it's almost 
um, like a value that doesn't mean too much. And then 311 out of the Z battery there for the entire duration down to that 3.3 volt cutoff. When we look at these results, the results definitely show us that they're, they are quite weak in comparison to what we would expect from a lithium polymer battery pack. And it might be because this battery chemistry in both of these cells actually behave very different than what the other battery cells that we've tested behave as. And one of the ways that we can see this is when I take a battery pack and charge it up to that 4.20 volt mark from the storage voltage, somewhere around 3.80 to 3.85, only about 12 to 1700 milliamp hour go into it from that point of view. When the battery pack is fully depleted from this specific run and then charged up to that storage voltage, majority of the capacity is actually going into it to get to that 3.80 volt mark. And this is very different than the rest of the batteries that we're testing here. So just by that alone, this shows us that it's not a true lithium polymer performance battery pack uh, when you look at the actual performance from this perspective. It's almost in its own category and performing differently than the others. Well, that was a quick one. Now that we got the 105 amp load test, let's jump into our 30 amp capacity test. Here we have the data from a 30 amp discharge. This is gonna show us how much capacity we get out of the battery pack and how it performs during that capacity run. On the top, we got a chart representing a bunch of metrics and on the bottom, we got our graph that shows us essentially what the voltage looks like throughout the discharge and showing us what the current looks like, seeing how we're trying to aim for that 30 amp mark, which is this line right here. When we look at the bottom here, we got the time measured in tenths of a second. So when we look at the very last value, 5619, that's 561.9 seconds. That's how that bottom is going to look for all the graphs that we do that are gonna look similar to this. When we look at the voltage, this is the thing that I find the most interesting about the Yumi battery pack as well as the Z battery pack that we tested last time we ran our battery test. And what we're seeing here is that it has about an average voltage of somewhere between 3.5 and 3.6 volts at this 30 amp load mark, which really ultimately shows that this battery pack more aligns itself with the performance you'd expect from a lithium ion battery pack versus what you would expect from a lithium polymer battery pack. When we look at how much capacity we were able to get out of the Yumi battery pack, it is about 4870 on average between battery one, battery two, and that is pretty decent considering the Z battery pack did not achieve this kind of value. When we're looking at the milliamp hour to 3.5 volt, this surely shows us that it should be much higher. There should be very small or negligible difference between the total capacity and the milliamp hour to 3.50 volts. But because this performs more like a lithium ion battery pack, it actually has a lot more voltage sag, and this is what we see as a result. Similar idea to the 3.6 volt mark. And then we look at the voltage at the 10 second mark. This is really telling us how well it can hold voltage at this 30 amp load. And this shows us the voltage at the 10 second mark being close to 4.0 volts. Not too, too bad, but definitely could be or should be a lot better than that. The energy watt minutes per cell, 1040 versus the average cell watts that we got was at 10, 110 watts there per cell. And now we're gonna take a look at what kind of internal resistance that we get out of this specific battery. So all we do is we charge at a 1.5 C rating. We make sure that we have the temperature within the range that is testable here on the channel. And from there, we're gonna skip through a lot of this and then we jump to their conclusion. So here we can see all the resistances. It's averaging six and change for this particular pack. We're gonna take the average and then compute the actual C rating based off of IR. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we're taking a look at the RC Calc Sheet version 24.12. This version of the sheet is gonna be released here in the next several days. I'm gonna put it, of course, on the Patreon site. If you're a member of that site, you're gonna be able to download a copy for yourself and use everything that we're going through here in this very next couple minutes. Now, if you're a member of tier two, you will also have access to download the battery spec sheet. This is gonna have all the performance data of the batteries that we've tested up to today. So let's take a look now and jump over to the LiPo calc sheet. Oh, but before we do, what I wanna show you is this cell here. So what we did is we taken the resistance of all of the cells in the two battery packs, of course, eight cells, we averaged them. What I was really surprised about this battery pack is the Yumi between battery one, battery two, the, the results have been consistent, not just in our internal resistance test, but also in the capacity for the 30 amp load, as well as even our 105 amp load. Consistent results is 
exactly what we expect and we want to see with all of our battery packs here on the channel. Now that we know this, let's jump over to the LiPo calc sheet. So we're going to use some of the information here on the calc sheet to determine the the uh, C rating based off of internal resistance. But before we do that, I want to go and mention this because we talked about this earlier in the video. And what we're really seeing here is that we got a voltage of 3.8 and the capacity remaining in the pack should be 40%. However, this is not actually true. What's actually happening on the Yumi and the Z battery packs is it's not following, as we mentioned before, the lithium polymer standards that we have here. And what we're seeing is that we're actually only putting in about 1200 to 1700 milliamp hour into the battery back instead of having the majority come from that storage voltage up to 4.20 volts. So something to keep in mind, because if you're trying to follow this type of chart for a Z battery pack or this type of battery pack, the Yumi battery pack, you're not going to be able to use this chart at all because the results won't actually tell you anything useful in terms of the capacity remaining from both of these packs. So with that being said, let's now jump over to the capacity of the battery pack, enter this information so we can calculate the C rating based off of IR only. So the battery packs calculated C rating that we got last day was 12.6 based off of the Z battery pack having an IR of 7.55. That's quite high. Now we're a little bit lower at 6.39. Not a substantial difference when you're at this height. The difference between 6.39 and 7. Point whatever was there, 7.5, is quite negligible. And you'll see why. So when we go and we hit this now and enter it, you can see we got 66 amps from the previous Z battery pack. Today on the Yumi battery pack, we're going to get 71 amps. So 66 amps versus 71, I don't see that as much of a difference. Now we have 71 amps as the maximum continuous current giving us a C rating of 13.7. This is the actual C rating whether it's 12 or 13 makes hardly of a difference. The battery pack here is rated for 50 C and we're finding that it's nothing close to that which is probably what we would expect at this point since the majority of all of our battery packs in fact all of them has performed much different than the label in every single test we've ever done. So this is what the results are of the Yumi battery pack. Well guys that pretty well does it for this video. In conclusion what we're seeing here on this battery performance test is that we don't get the typical battery performance that we expect out of a lithium polymer battery pack. It does perform quite weak relative to all the rest of the batteries that we have tested here on the channel. However, if you are comparing as we've done here, the Z battery pack versus this Yumi battery pack, whichever one is less expensive would be the ideal thing there because I don't really see the performance differences between these two battery packs as all that drastic. In fact, they perform very similarly and much differently than the rest of the batteries. Now, if I had to compare these against other batteries that we've tested on the channel, you can go ahead and use the battery pack and the Patreon sheet to do this comparison yourself, or you can go off of the other video that we've tested. But ultimately, if I compare these battery packs to the Turnigy Rapid, the Turnigy Rapid performs much better and is a lot more cost effective. That's a battery pack that I would choose if I'm looking for a reliable and good performing pack that I can get at a really good price. In the next couple weeks to end the year, we're going to pretty much do a summarization of the batteries that we've tested and we're going to look at the price that we have for each one of those packs so we can ultimately see what is the best value when we're considering performance as one of the elements we're considering. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.